Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before starting the video, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button and give this video a like up to day on days of our lives. Theresa knows just how to play Alex. A phone call could derail Ava's plans, Kayla lashes out at Steve, and John seeks Harris advice. Please note that if you purchase something by clicking on a link within this story, we may receive a small commission of the sale. At the pub, Steve reports to John that he's done several deep dive searches, but he can't find Clyde. He grumbles about Ava double-crossing them, which led to Clyde escaping. John wonders if Ava knows more than she's letting on. As Ava prepares breakfast at the apartment, she tells Harris how free she feels. Her life belongs to her again. That's a great way to start the day, he remarks, but she can think of a better way. She kisses him. Later, as they eat, Harris gets a message about the bistro's audit. The books are clean, and there's nothing linking Ava to illegal activity. Ava is relieved, but still worries her involvement with the drugs will come out. Harris is confident she's in the clear. Clyde has no power over her now. She's free to live her life and plan her future. Constantin finds a wistful Maggie gazing at Victor's portrait. She's trying to reconcile her late husband's many sides. He notes they all have their pasts, but what is important is that they are here in the present. She calls him remarkable. I am inspired by the woman who stands before me, he responds. At Titan, Alex praises Theresa for her performance in a meeting. She's happy to be back in the office instead of working remotely. Joining them, Brady tells Theresa about catching Tate and Holly together. Alex warily observes as they worry about the teen's toxic relationship. Theresa thanks Brady for the way he's handled it and hugs him. In the pub, Steve and John plan to talk to Ava. Maybe she remembers something new to put Clyde back in his cage. If he hurts someone while on the run, it's on them, and they can't live with that. Kayla approaches, wondering what they can't live with. Steve says he can't live with the fact that Clyde got away. He asks to talk later and leaves with John. Kayla suspiciously watches them go. At the Kyriakis mansion, Maggie recounts how surprised she was to find a second chapter with Victor. She expounds on his big heart and devotion to his family. That's the Victor she knew and loved. Constantin says that's the Victor they both should remember. Entering the living room, Julie screams, this place is turning into a madhouse. She composes herself and says she loves the children, but when is spring break over? After Constantin leaves, the women sit for tea. Maggie tells Julie about Victor's role in Katharina's death and about Holly's drug use. Julie assures Maggie she and Doug are there for her, but then realizes she's not all that alone. She has Constantine. Maggie confirms he's become a good friend. As Theresa prepares to go to a meeting, Alex tells her he'll make them dinner at home. A confused Brady asks if he missed something. Alex explains she moved back in. After Theresa leaves, Brady and Alex cordially discuss the situation. Brady then warns Alex not to screw with her. At her kitchen table, Ava muses on what she'd like to do now. She recalls a long-ago interest in fashion, but cooking is her passion. Whatever she decides, Harris will be there cheering her on. John and Steve come by to ask if Ava remembered anything useful about Clyde. Ava hasn't. Harris asks them to share what they find so as not to take things into their own hands. Wouldn't dream of it, John deadpans. Alva steps away to change, and Steve leaves. John hangs back to ask Harris for Goldman's personnel file. He also brings up what Megan did to him. Does Harris worry it could happen all over again? Harris does, but working on himself with the doctor saved him. He reminds himself every day that he had no free will and wasn't responsible for his actions. He urges John to put the blame on the people who try to control him and forgive himself. In the square, Theresa bristles as she runs into Constantin. He wants an update on Alex. She guardedly reports she moved back in with him, but it's platonic for now. She assumes that's not moving fast enough for him. On the contrary, Constantin says, Nothing attracts men like Alex more than forbidden fruit. Theresa is way ahead of him. Mocking his accent, she says she will create a slow burn until Alex is consumed by the flames of passion. She strolls away.
Steve comes to Kayla's office at the hospital with flowers. What did you do? She skeptically asks. Steve tells her about Clyde's prison break. How could you do something so stupid? She shouts. Steve defensively reminds her he thought Trip was going to die. Kayla angrily retorts that there's no excuse for him getting sucked back into Ava's dark vortex. It always causes them to suffer. And Steve should know that better than anyone. She storms out. At Titan, Alex accuses Brady of being interested in Theresa as more than just the mother of his child. Brady denies it. He just worries about her being around Kristen since Alex is dating her. Alex thinks he's lying to himself, but whatever happens between himself and Theresa is between them. Running into John in the square, Brady invites his father to a Cubs game with him and Tate. He also wants to know how he's doing. John says he's doing better. Brady can see that he's found some peace. John is starting to think his prayers are finally being answered. Alex comes home to Theresa pointedly folding her lingerie in the living room. He bites his hand and loses focus as he heads to the kitchen to make them dinner. Mission close to accomplished. Theresa chuckles to herself. After Harris has left to pick up clothes from his place, Ava gets a call from an unknown number. She reluctantly answers to Clyde. I bet you thought you were rid of me, huh?